A fire extinguisher, or extinguisher, is an active fire protection device used to extinguish or control small fires, often in emergency situations. It is not intended for use on an out-of-control fire, such as one which has reached the ceiling, endangers the user, that is, no escape route, smoke, explosion hazard, etc or otherwise requires the expertise of a fire department. Typically, a fire extinguisher consists of a handheld cylindrical pressure vessel containing an agent which can be discharged to extinguish a fire. In the United States, fire extinguishers in all buildings other than houses are generally required to be serviced and inspected by a fire protection service company at least annually. Some jurisdictions require more frequent service for fire extinguishers. The servicer places a tag on the extinguisher to indicate the type of service performed, annual inspection, recharge, new fire extinguisher. A British fire extinguisher with ID sign, call point and fire action sign There are two main types of fire extinguishers, stored pressure and cartridge operated. In stored pressure units, the expellent is stored in the same chamber as the firefighting agent itself. Depending on the agent used, different propellants are used. With dry chemical extinguishers, nitrogen is typically used, water and foam extinguishers typically use air. Stored pressure fire extinguishers are the most common type. Cartridge operated extinguishers contain the expellent gas in a separate cartridge that is punctured prior to discharge, exposing the propellant to the extinguishing agent. This type is not as common, used primarily in areas such as industrial facilities, where they receive higher than average use. They have the advantage of simple and prompt recharge, allowing an operator to discharge the extinguisher recharge it, and return to the fire in a reasonable amount of time. Unlike stored pressure types, these extinguishers use compressed carbon dioxide instead of nitrogen, although nitrogen cartridges are used on low temperature, minus 60 rated, models. Cartridge operated extinguishers are available in dry chemical and dry powder types in the U.S. and in water, wetting agent, foam dry chemical, classes A, B, C and B, C, and dry powder, class D, types in the rest of the world. Wheeled fire extinguisher and a sign inside a parking lot fire extinguishers are further divided into handheld and cart mounted, also called wheeled extinguishers. Handheld extinguishers weigh from 0.5 to 14 kilograms, 1.1 to 30.9 pounds, and are hence, easily portable by hand. Cart-mounted units typically weigh more than 23 kilograms, 51 pounds. These wheeled models are most commonly found at construction sites, airport runways, heliports, as well as First docks fire and fire extinguisher of which there is any record was patented in England in 1723 by Ambrose Godfrey, a celebrated chemist at that time. It consisted of a cask of fire extinguishing liquid containing a pewter chamber of gunpowder. This was connected with a system of fuses which were ignited, exploding the gunpowder and scattering the solution. This device was probably used to a limited extent, as Bradley's weekly messenger for November 7, 1729 refers to its efficiency in stopping a fire in London. The modern fire extinguisher was invented by British Captain George William Manby in 1818. It consisted of a copper vessel of 3 gallons, 13.6 liters, of pearl ash, potassium carbonate, solution contained within compressed air. A classic copper building type soda acid extinguisher The soda acid extinguisher was first patented in 1866 by François Carlier of France, which mixed a solution of water and sodium bicarbonate with tartaric acid, producing the propellant CO2 gas. 
A soda acid extinguisher was patented in the U.S. in 1881 by Alman M. Granger. His extinguisher used the reaction between sodium bicarbonate solution and sulfuric acid to expel pressurized water onto a fire. A vial of concentrated sulfuric acid was suspended in the cylinder. Depending on the type of extinguisher, the vial of acid could be broken in one of two ways. One used a plunger to break the acid vial, while the second released a lead stopple that held the vial closed. Once the acid was mixed with the bicarbonate solution, carbon dioxide gas was expelled and thereby pressurized the water. The pressurized water was forced from the canister through a nozzle or short length of hose. The cartridge operated extinguisher was invented by Reed and Campbell of England in 1881, which used water or water based solutions. They later invented a carbon tetrachloride model called the Petrolex which was marketed toward automotive use. A glass grenade style extinguisher, to be thrown into a fire. The chemical foam extinguisher was invented in 1904 by Alexander Loran in Russia, based on his previous invention of firefighting foam. Loran first used it to extinguish a pan of burning naphtha. It worked and looked similar to the soda acid type, but the inner parts were slightly different. The main tank contained a solution of sodium bicarbonate in water, whilst the inner container, somewhat larger than the equivalent in a soda acid unit, contained a solution of aluminium sulfate. When the solutions were mixed, usually by inverting the unit, the two liquids reacted to create a frothy foam and carbon dioxide gas. The gas expelled the foam in the form of a jet. Although licorice root extracts and similar compounds were used as additives, stabilizing the foam by reinforcing the bubble walls, there was no foam compound in these units. The foam was a combination of the products of the chemical reactions, sodium and aluminium salt gels inflated by the carbon dioxide. Because of this, the foam was discharged directly from the unit, with no need for an aspirating branch pipe, as in newer foam compound types. A pyrene, brass, carbon tetrachloride extinguisher in 1910, the pyrene manufacturing company of Delaware filed a patent for using carbon tetrachloride, CTC, or CCL4, to extinguish fires. Four, the liquid vaporized and extinguished the flames by inhibiting the chemical chain reaction of the combustion process. It was an early 20th century presupposition that the fire suppression ability of carbon tetrachloride relied on oxygen removal. In 1911, they patented a small, portable extinguisher that used the chemical. Five. This consisted of a brass or chrome container with an integrated hand pump, which was used to expel a jet of liquid towards the fire. It was usually of one imperial quart, 1.1 liters, or one imperial pint, 0.57 liters, capacity but was also available in up to two imperial gallons, 9.1 liters, size. As the container was unpressurized, it could be refilled after use through a filling plug with a fresh supply of CTC. Another type of carbon tetrachloride extinguisher was the fire grenade. This consisted of a glass sphere filled with CTC, that was intended to be hurled at the base of a fire. Early ones used salt water, but CTC was more effective. Carbon tetrachloride was suitable for liquid and electrical fires and the extinguishers were fitted to motor vehicles. Carbon tetrachloride extinguishers were withdrawn in the 1950s because of the chemical's toxicity, exposure to high concentrations damages the nervous system and internal organs. Additionally, when used on a fire, the heat can convert CTC to phosgene gas. 7 formerly used as a chemical weapon. In the 1940s, Germany invented the liquid chlorobrimomethane, 
CBM, for use in aircraft. It was more effective and slightly less toxic than carbon tetrachloride and was used until 1969. Methyl bromide was discovered as an extinguishing agent in the 1920s and was used extensively in Europe. It is a low-pressure gas that works by inhibiting the chain reaction of the fire and is the most toxic of the vaporizing liquids, used until the 1960s. The vapor and combustion byproducts of all vaporizing liquids were highly toxic, and could cause death in confined spaces. A chemical foam extinguisher with contents. The carbon dioxide, CO2, extinguisher was invented, at least in the US, by the Walter Kidd Company in 1924 in response to Bell Telephone's request for an electrically non conductive chemical for extinguishing the previously difficult to extinguish fires in telephone switchboards. It consisted of a tall metal cylinder containing 7.5 pounds kilograms, of CO2 with a wheel valve and a woven brass, cotton covered hose, with a composite funnel like horn as a nozzle. CO2 is still popular today as it is a nozone friendly clean agent and is used heavily in film and television production to extinguish burning stuntmen. Carbon dioxide extinguishes fire mainly by displacing oxygen. It was once thought that it worked by cooling, although this effect on most fires is negligible. This characteristic is well known and has led to the widespread misuse of carbon dioxide extinguishers to rapidly cool beverages, especially beer. An early dry chemical extinguisher, the first ones had copper cylinders. This one is steel. In 1928, Dugas, later bought by Ansu, came out with a cartridge operated dry chemical extinguisher, which used sodium bicarbonate specially treated with chemicals to render it free flowing and moisture resistant. It consisted of a copper cylinder with an internal CO2 cartridge. The operator turned the wheel valve on top to puncture the cartridge and squeezed a lever on the valve at the end of the hose to discharge the chemical. This was the first agent available for large-scale three-dimensional liquid and pressurized gas fires, and was but remained largely a specialty type until the 1950s, when small dry chemical units were marketed for home use. ABC Dry Chemical came over from Europe in the 1950s, with Super K being invented in the early 60s and Purple K being developed by the U.S. Navy in the late 1960s. In the 1970s, Halon 1211 came over to the United States from Europe, where it had been used since the late 40s or early 50s. Halon 1301 had been developed by DuPont and the U.S. Army in 1954. Both 1211 and 1301 work by inhibiting the chain reaction of the fire, and in the case of Halon 1211, cooling Class A fuels as well. Halon is still in use today but is falling out of favor for many uses due to its environmental impact. Europe, and Australia have severely restricted its use, since the Montreal Protocol of 1987. Less severe restrictions have been implemented in the United States, the Middle East, and Asia. Classification Internationally there are several accepted classification methods for handheld fire extinguisher. Each classification is useful in fighting fires with a particular group of fuel. Australia and New Zealand specifications for fire extinguishers are set out in the standard AS, ANZIAS 1841, the most recent version being released in 2007. All fire extinguishers must be painted signal red. Except for water extinguishers, each extinguisher has a colored band near the top, covering at least 10% of the extinguisher's body length, specifying its contents. In Australia, yellow, 
Hey Lon, fire extinguishers are illegal to own or use on a fire, unless an essential use exemption has been granted. This is due to the ozone depleting nature of Halon. United Kingdom Typical United Kingdom CO2 and water fire extinguishers According to the standard BSN3, fire extinguishers in the United Kingdom as all throughout Europe are red rel 3000, and a band or circle of a second color covering between 5 to 10 percent of the surface area of the extinguisher indicates the contents. Before 1997, the entire body of the fire extinguisher was color-coded according to the type of extinguishing agent. The UK recognizes six fire classes. Class of fires involve organic solids such as paper and wood. Class B fires involve flammable or combustible liquids, including petrol, grease, and oil. Class C fires involve flammable gases. Class D fires involve combustible metals. Class E fires involve electrical equipment slash appliances. Class F fires involve cooking fat and oil. Class E has been discontinued, but covered fires involving electrical appliances. This is no longer used on the basis that, when the power supply is turned off, an electrical fire can fall into any of the remaining five categories. In the UK, the use of hail on gas is now prohibited except under certain situations, such as on aircraft and in the military and police. Fire extinguishing performance per fire class is displayed using numbers and letters such as 13A. 55B.E and 3 does not recognize a separate electrical class. However there is an additional feature requiring special testing, 35 kV dielectric test per N37-2004. A powder or CO2 extinguisher will bear an electrical ectogram as standard signifying that it can be used on live electrical fires, given the symbol E in the table. If a water-based extinguisher has passed the 35 kV test it will also bear the same electrical pictogram. However, any water-based extinguisher is only recommended for inadvertent use on electrical fires. United States an ABC powder, monoammonium phosphate, fire extinguisher. There is no official standard in the United States for the color of fire extinguishers, though they are typically red except for Class D extinguishers which are usually yellow, water and Class K wet chemical extinguishers which are usually silver, and water mist extinguishers which are usually white. Extinguishers are marked with pictograms depicting the types of fires that the extinguisher is approved to fight. In the past, extinguishers were marked with colored geometric symbols, and some extinguishers still use both symbols. The types of fires and additional standards are described in NFPA 10, Standard for Portable Fire Extinguishers, 2010 edition. Fire extinguishing capacity is rated in accordance with ANSI, L711, Rating and Fire Testing of Fire Extinguishers. The ratings are described using numbers preceding the class letter, such as 1A 10BC. The number preceding the A multiplied by 1.25 gives the equivalent extinguishing capability in gallons of water. The number preceding the B indicates the size of fire in square feet that an ordinary user should be able to extinguish. There is no additional rating for Class C, as it only indicates that the extinguishing agent will not conduct electricity and an extinguisher will never have a rating of just C. For additional USL rating information see Fast Flow Extinguishers Installation of Fire Extinguisher Fitted to the passenger seat of a car Fire extinguishers are typically fitted in buildings at an easily accessible location, such as against a wall in a high traffic area. They are also often fitted to motor vehicles, watercraft, and aircraft. This is required by law in many jurisdictions, for identified classes of vehicles. Under NFPA 10 all commercial vehicles must carry at least one fire extinguisher, with size, 
all rating depending on type of vehicle and cargo, that is, fuel tankers typically must have a 20 pounds 9.1 kilograms, while most others can carry a 5 pounds 2.3 kilograms. The revised NFPA 10 created criteria on the placement of fast flow extinguishers in locations such as those storing and transporting pressurized flammable liquids and pressurized flammable gas or areas with possibility of three-dimensional class B hazards are required to have fast flow extinguishers as required by NFPA 5.5.1.1. Varying classes of competition vehicles require fire extinguishing systems, the simplest requirements being a 1A colon 10BC handheld portable extinguisher mounted to the interior of the vehicle. The height limit for installation, as determined by the National Fire Protection Association NFPA, is 60 in 1.5 meters for fire extinguishers weighing less than 40 pounds. 18 kilograms. However, compliance with the Americans with Disabilities Act (ADA) also needs to be followed within the United States. The ADA height limit of the fire extinguisher, as measured at the handle, is 48 in 1.2 meters. Fire extinguisher installations are also limited to protruding no more than 4 inches into the adjacent path of travel. The ADA rule states that any object adjacent to a path of travel cannot project more than 4 in 10 centimeters, if the object's bottom leading edge is higher than 27 in 0.69 meters. The 4-inch protrusion rule was designed to protect people with low vision and those who are blind. The height limit rule of 48 in is primarily related to access by people with wheelchairs but it is also related to other disabilities as well. Prior to 2012, the height limit was 54 in 1.4 meters for side reach by wheelchair accessible installations. Installations made prior to 2012 at the 54 inch height are not required to be changed.